Welcome to Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Jeannie Norris and I work at the Institute for School Partnership at Washington University here in St. Louis. Today I'll be teaching science for third grade, but learners of all ages are welcome to join me. I'm so glad you're here today. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to go outside, notice things, and wonder about them. There is so much that we can figure out just by looking at our own yards, neighborhoods, and communities. So let's go ahead and get started. So today we are going to think even more about ecosystems. We're going to think about how the plants and animals get what they need to survive in very different ways. And we're going to think about what happens when an ecosystem changes. All ecosystems change and we're gonna spend a lot of time thinking about that. So let's take a look at something very interesting that we noticed in our backyard. One day when I was out in my garden, I was looking at my herbs when I noticed that there were these beautiful swallowtail caterpillars munching on the fennel. Take a look at them, they're so cool looking. They turn into swallowtail butterflies, which might look like this or this. But one day, I looked for them again, and they were gone. Weren't those caterpillars so cool? Oh man, I, I was so amazed when I first saw them. So what did you notice about those caterpillars? Hmm, what did you notice? Well, I noticed that they were on my fennel plant. So I'm going to write that down. That was the only place that I found them. I also noticed that they were eating the fennel. What else, what else, what else? Um, I also noticed that they had really cool stripes on them and they each kind of looked unique. They weren't the exact same stripes. So I'll write unique stripes. So those were some really good observations. Hmm, okay, what questions do you have about those caterpillars? Hmm. I wonder, why were they on the fennel? on anything else. I also wonder why weren't they in my backyard last year? I didn't see any of them last year, but then I did this year. All right, what do you think? I think we've got some good noticings and wonderings. So now, if we want to figure out the answers to our questions, we have to investigate and we have to research. So let's go ahead and do that. In my backyard, I often observe cardinals, indigo buntings, and blue jays. I also see squirrels and chipmunks. Here's what my yard looked like before I moved in. There was no garden. It was just a lot of grass. Pretty trees though. Okay, so we just looked at some really cool photos of what my backyard looked like before I moved in and some animals that I see in my backyard regularly. So let's chart what we noticed. What did you notice? Hmm. I noticed that there were cardinals. Squirrels. Blue jays.
and a really beautiful indigo bunting. I also noticed that none of that was there before. None of the garden stuff was there before. It was only pretty much grass. No garden, only grass. Okay, what do you think? Do you think that we're getting closer to figuring out what is happening with these swallowtail caterpillars? Hmm, I think that we are. I researched more about swallowtail butterflies, and it turns out they love to lay their eggs on fennel because the caterpillars really like to eat that plant. They also will eat things like parsley and dill. Wow, that was some really important information, wasn't it? I'm so glad that I did that research. So I think we're getting pretty close to being able to explain why those caterpillars showed up in my backyard. What do you think? Okay. So I think that to show what I know, I'm going to draw a food chain. Have you ever heard of a food chain before? It's basically showing who eats whom in an ecosystem. Now remember that ecosystem is that word for the environment and the parts of the environment that interact together. So a food chain is a model that scientists use to show how the parts of the environment interact. Specifically, again, like I said, it shows who eats whom and therefore it shows how energy flows. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and start by drawing the fennel. So fennel is a really beautiful plant. I love looking at fennel. It has a bulb and it has all of these stalks that just kind of come up off of it. And it has really feathery leaves at the top. And then when it blooms, it creates these really pretty yellow flowers. The cool thing about fennel is you can eat all of the parts of it. You can eat the bulb, you can eat the stems, you can eat the leaves, and you can wait until the flowers form and then they turn to seed and then you can harvest the seeds and put them in things like pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce. I really love fennel. So we have our fennel and where do you think that the fennel gets its energy from? Well, I think that it gets its energy from the sun. So I will draw the sun. And then the way that we show that the energy is flowing is by drawing an arrow. So the energy is going from the sun to the fennel, so that's why we draw the arrow pointing to the fennel. Okay, now we know, oh, and one more thing, I wanna label my drawing. So sun, fennel, All right, so then the fennel gives its energy to something. What do you think? Who does the fennel give its energy to? The caterpillar. Okay, so let's draw a swallowtail caterpillar. I'm gonna do my best here. Okay, and then we'll draw some cool stripes on it. And it looks like it has a lot of crazy legs. A lot of them are not real legs, but we'll draw them anyways. And I don't know, maybe we can add some more color to it. They had some yellow on them too. Why not draw a smiley face on it? They don't really smile, but it's cute. Okay. And then we'll label that swallowtail caterpillar. All 
All right, that's a pretty good food chain so far. It's showing how energy is moving from the sun to fennel to the swallowtail caterpillar. Now I think I've really shown what I know, and I think that I can explain why these caterpillars showed up. I think that it's because I added the fennel to my ecosystem. I changed my ecosystem. When the fennel's not there, the caterpillars can't be there. They do not survive well unless they have something like fennel or dill or parsley. So that's, that's pretty cool just to think about how I had an impact on my backyard ecosystem. I wasn't even trying to bring these caterpillars here. I just really wanted some delicious fennel. But I was able to attract these beautiful, beautiful caterpillars. Let's read this book I found called Meadow Food Chains. It is by Bobby Kalman and Kelly McCauley, and it's published by Crabtree Publishing Company. For nonfiction books, we can kind of pick and choose whatever we need to get from the book, so I might not read every page, and I also might not read everything that is on every page. What is a meadow? Have you ever been to a meadow before? It says that a meadow is an undisturbed area where different types of grasses and flowers grow. They're open places with few trees, and they get a lot of sunshine and can be hot in the summer. Hmm, okay, let's learn about the animals that are in a meadow. What is a food chain? There are many plants and animals on Earth. Plants and animals are living things. Living things need air, water, sunlight, and food to stay alive. Staying alive. Plants and animals get nutrients from food. Nutrients are substances that plants and animals need to grow and to stay healthy. Animals also get energy from food. Animals use energy to breathe air, to grow, and to move around. Hmm, okay, there's a butterfly just like the swallowtail butterflies that laid the eggs that brought the swallowtail caterpillars to my fennel. Producing food. Plants produce or make their own food. They make food by catching some of the sun's energy and changing it into the nu nutrients they need. Plants are the only living things that make their own food. Hmm, so fennel, fennel's a plant, so fennel must produce its own energy, or produce its own food by getting energy from the sun. Eating food. Animals must eat food to get nutrients. Some animals eat plants. Others eat animals that have fed on plants. This pattern of eating and being eaten is called a food chain. All part, plants and animals are a part of food chains. Okay, so that must mean that my fennel and the swallowtail caterpillars are part of the food chain, right? Oh, here's an energy pyramid, and there are some words on here that I want to point out to you. So the energy pyramid just kind of shows how energy is distributed in a food chain. So here at the bottom, we have the first level, which is plants. We call plants producers because they make their own food and get energy from the sun. There are lots of producers in an ecosystem. And there needs to be a lot of producers so that we can support the second level, which is made of herbivores. They're also called consumers. So we say they're called consumers because they have to consume food to get energy, but they're specifically herbivores because they only eat plants. Okay, then here in the top level, we have carnivores. Carnivores get energy by eating other animals. And so carnivores are also consumers. There are also omnivores. Omnivores are those animals that eat both plants and animals to survive. So skunks are the example that they provided here of a meadow omnivore. That book had a lot of great information in it. There were a lot of tricky words in there. So let's write some of them down and talk about them together. So we have a word producer. And those are things like plants and they get energy from the sun. Then we have consumers. And 
they get energy from plants and animals and other living things. Then we have the ways that consumers can get their food. So you can be a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore. If you're a carnivore, you get your energy from meat. If you're an omnivore, you get energy from plants and animals. We'll put meat slash animals over here. And if you're an herbivore, you get your energy only from plants. Okay, so there are a lot of different ways that organisms can get energy in an ecosystem. They can get it from the sun, like producers do. They can get it from plants and animals, like consumers do. And you can be a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore, eating animals, plants and animals, or just plants. Hmm, okay, this is making me think, I want to revisit my food chain, okay, that I drew. So let's use some of that vocabulary that we just learned on our food chain. What do you think the fennel is? It could be a producer or a consumer. What do you think? Hmm. It is a producer. The swallowtail caterpillar, what do we think that is? It's a consumer. Specifically, it eats plants so we call it an herbivore. Okay, I'm starting to get an idea here. I think I know why my swallowtail caterpillars might have disappeared. I think that my food chain here keeps going. So let's draw what that might look like. keeps going. Okay, what do you think eats it? Hmm. Well, I did some research and I figured out that blue jays can eat caterpillars. And so I think that what happened is that the blue jays ate the swallowtail caterpillar. Such a bummer. But I'm going to go ahead and try to draw a blue jay to show the completion of this food chain. They kind of have a funky crest. And a big tail. They have some cool stripes on them. They have a cool mask looking eye here. And they're really pretty blue. good blue jay. I'll label it. And the blue jay, what do you think? What, what would we label it as? Let's call it a consumer. And it eats not only things like caterpillars and grasshoppers, but it also eats Things like nuts and seeds. So what would we call that? Hmm. The word is omnivore. So 
So here we have a backyard food chain. We have the blue jay getting its energy from the caterpillar, the caterpillar getting its energy from the fennel, and the fennel getting its energy from the sun. And we showed that flow of energy from the sun to a consumer by drawing the arrows. Food chains are really, really cool ways to show the interactions in an ecosystem. And there are lots more food chains, so let's explore some more. Scientists and conservationists think all the time about food chains and ecosystem changes and how the different organisms in the ecosystem interact. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a scientist and environmental educator that I met with recently. So the scientist's name is Dr. Yehuda Ben-Shahar, and he is a scientist at Washington University in St. Louis who studies bees and fruit flies. And I met with a family member of his named Ellen Hartz, and she was nice enough to let me visit her front and backyard to see how she has been really busy taking care of the plants and animals there um, and making it just look beautiful. Ellen Hartz is an environmental educator and she really loves being outside and noticing and wondering. Do you see why I called her yard beautiful? It's full of tons of native plants. And those native flowering plants have brought a lot of pollinators to the scene. You can see a lot of different kinds of bees in her yard. You can also see lots of monarch butterflies because she planted milkweed, which they love to eat and lay their eggs on. Her yard didn't always look like this. She showed me a picture of what it looked like just a year ago. Can you believe that? Just grass. And she turned it into a total pollinator oasis. What I found most inspiring about Miss Hartz is her sit spot idea. She loves noticing and wondering so much that she created a special place where she can sit outside to do that. Let's hear her talk about it. And so that is my sit spot. And what I've seen here, I mean, the other day I saw a monarch on the liatris and a hummingbird wanted to forage on it too. And the monarch chased away the hummingbird. <laughs> well, you don't see that unless you're sitting. Hearing her talk about the sit spot idea made me think about how much I love to look at my own backyard. I'll talk to you about how you can make your own sit spot in just a little bit. Here's another example of some prairie food chains. We have the purple coneflower, the vole, honeybees, leaf beetles, sparrows, and ants. So take a look for a second at how these different parts of the ecosystem interact. We had thought about how basically when you add something to an ecosystem, you can attract new things. Like when I added the fennel to my garden, it attracted the swallowtail butterflies, which laid their eggs and gave me the swallowtail caterpillars. So what would happen if we remove the purple coneflower from our ecosystem? Mm. Okay, the honeybee, it is going to probably disappear or decrease in number because if you remove the flowers, it can't really get much else. It needs the nectar and pollen from the flowers. Then the sparrow, will it disappear, do you think? It might be okay. It might just eat more beetles and more ants. So then that might affect, you know, maybe there would be less decomposition happening in the ecosystem. So when you remove one thing from an ecosystem, the purple coneflowers, you end up impacting all the different parts of the ecosystem. The leaf beetles might decrease in number because the sparrow's eating more of them, for example. Well, I've had a lot of fun exploring my backyard and Ellen Hartz's backyard and thinking about all the different ways that ecosystem interactions occur. But I hope that this is just the beginning of your own explorations. So here are some ideas for you how you can keep this science fun going. For example, you can go outside and look around and try to create your own food chain for your yard or your neighborhood or a park nearby. Um, and you can also use that Seek app that I told you about last week. Remember, the Seek app is free. 
and it can help you identify the plants and animals in your surrounding community. And the other thing you can do is create your own sit spot. I know I'm going to be doing that. So remember to make your own sit spot, you either look outside a window of your home or you look somewhere around your yard, wherever your family members tell you it's safe, and you go there as much as you can and you sit there for as long as you can. Sometimes, like she said, it helps to like bring a book and just look at your book every once in a while, but be sure you're looking around and just notice and wonder about the things that you see and look for patterns of how things change over time while you're sitting in your sit spot. I bet you'll be amazed at seeing all the different things that are happening when you look outside, you just think nothing's happening, but really so much is changing and happening all the time. Let's go ahead and review all the things that we discussed today. So we learned that animals consume different types of food. So for example, the swallowtail caterpillars, they consume fennel, but the blue jays consume the swallowtail caterpillars. There are producers, consumers, and decomposers in ecosystems. So fennel is a type of producer and caterpillars and blue jays are types of consumers. Organisms are connected in an ecosystem. So you remember we saw all the different food chains and how when you removed or added something from a food chain, that even impacted the other parts of the ecosystem. And when ecosystem change, what lives there changes. So when I added the fennel to my backyard, all of a sudden I was seeing those swallowtail caterpillars. Wow, that is a lot that we figured out. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you had fun, and always keep noticing and wondering. Remember that that's the most important thing that you can do. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.